I bought this sweet little Stanley number 22 smoothing plane. I got it dirt cheap. It's really in remarkably great shape. The wood is almost perfect. The Japaning is a little scarred up and there's a tiny bit of rust here and there, but the knob is perfect. You can see the screws kind of beat up and I'm going to just slowly restore all these parts. The lever cap is in great shape. I'm going to polish that up a little bit. The blade and the uh, chip breaker are in great shape, hardly any rust. The, uh, this little retaining screw you can see is kind of beat up. I'm going to clean that up as well. The little lever cap keeper screw is also rather beat up and I'm going to clean that up as well. These uh, two screws that hold the frog in place are also kind of beat up and I'm going to restore those as well. In fact, that's one of the funnest parts, honestly, of restoring these old planes is to clean up all the small parts. And I'll polish up uh, that adjuster there as well. And um, I'm going to strip all the metal and repaint it. Going to sand the wood and refinish that, uh, wax it up and try to make a fun little user out of this. I have a little collection of wooden planes and I just thought I'd add this to the collection. You can see the blade is really in not that bad a shape. I just a few minutes on a wire wheel kind of you can see how that brings those parts back to life pretty easily. I uh, spent a little bit of time kind of flattening the face of the frog with some uh, sandpaper and then uh, flattening the contact area of the lever cap with some sandpaper as well. Here's that retainer screw that holds the chip breaker and the blade together. It had some pretty deep grooves in it and I'll tell you this is probably one of the most fun parts of a restoration like this is to take these small parts and really bring them to a whole new level of look with just a little bit of time spent on some 220 grit and then some 400 grit just to get the big scars out of the screws and then a little bit later I'll take them to the buffing wheel and you can get these things to just about have a mirror finish with not all that much work and it just adds to the kind of the sparkle of the plane. So you can see I'm doing this to the surfaces of all these screws. I'm uh, starting most of the time with 220 paper, going to 400 paper. Again, to get the scars out of the screws. Uh, you'll see later one of these screws was so scarred up I had to take a file to it. But honestly, just a little bit of time on the sandpaper and then even less time on the buffer with some decent uh, polishing rouge you can get literally a mirror finish and it's simple easy and it just kind of adds some sparkle to the plane so i spent a little bit of time on the chip breaker and on the blade just to get the the kind of the stains off of them and uh, you know i got them to look actually pretty decent with just a little bit of this sandpaper time I also removed the little uh, adjusting yoke. You can see that little uh, pin there. You can knock that out with a punch and you can pull that yoke off of there fairly easily just to get you know into some of the cracks and crevices to clean up the part to get it ready for painting. So I did that as well, uh, removing that yoke. Then I gave everything kind of just a cleaning. I just used denatured alcohol on a brush and I just, denatured alcohol is great because it's so friendly. Uh, the fumes don't bother you. They'll take off just surface dirt real easily. So I just kind of gave everything kind of a wash job just to see what I had to work with on the wooden parts and all the steel parts. Just being able to get down into the cracks and crevices with that brush and the denatured alcohol makes for an easy cleanup. Here I'm going to take some of these screws to the buffer just to give you an idea how fast and how uh, 
almost chrome-like, you can get these screws. I'm holding that screw, by the way, in the lever cap so that I don't hold on to it with my fingers because it gets really hot. But look, you can see you almost get a mirror finish with just honestly a few seconds on the buffing wheel. The same with these uh, retaining screw. Oh, this is the uh, lever cap screw. I got a little bit of polish on that and then noticed that it was just pretty marred up with a screwdriver, so I ended up taking a file to that to clean it up. But there's the screw that holds the knob. Again, you could get a mirror finish on that. I got a mirror finish on the two little screws that hold the frog to the body of the plane. Again, that was uh, very easy, just a few minutes at 200 pa 220 paper, then 400 paper, and then just a minute or two on the buffing wheel. I also just buffed uh, the, you know, the, the showy parts of the lever cap. I uh, buffed that little scalloped polished edge on the front face, and I also buffed the lever itself. You'll see later when the plane is assembled, I ended up stripping the paint off of the lever and uh, polished it and I got it down to you know almost a, a polished finish there you can see those screws looking really good that screw looking really good uh, that screw also looking really good I actually got them a little bit better than that before I finally put it together you can see that that is pretty marred up so I took a, a small little file to that screw and just filed down the uh, the places where a screwdriver had ruined the screw. And again, this only took a minute to just file those high spots out of it. Of a nice skinny file, I was able to even get into the slot of the screw to clean up the slot itself. A little bit of time on some 400 paper. You can see the, the file I had. And then again, I'm holding that in the frog because it's getting awfully hot. And uh, you can get it. To where it's just about mirror like. Here's the knob. I put usually what I do with this is I just put the screw in it, wrap some tape around it to make it a little bit tight, put the screw in the chuck of my drill press, and then just use sandpaper. I started with 220 paper, went down to 400 paper just to get this uh, pretty much into a raw state, and then I just put wax on it a, a mineral wax and or a, a mineral oil and beeswax finish on that the wooden part of the pl plane uh, was really in remarkably good shape but I thought hey I'm doing everything else I'll do this as well so I just did a quick sanding on it to just bring it down uh, and get some of the scars out of it and uh, then I uh, after sanding it down to get it uh, smooth to the touch, I applied some shellac. Oh, also leveled the bottom of it. I did a little bit of lapping, put some pencil lines on the bottom to see where the high and low spots were. And again, just I only took a few minutes. That paper was a little too light, so I got some 220 to get started with. And I have that piece of glass. I don't know where I got those, but they work great to just give you a perfectly level surface to hold your paper against. In just a few minutes of lapping, I got the bottom of the plane nice and flat. So it was pretty easy, honestly, getting the wood part of this plane in really good working order and uh, good looking as well. So here I am just rubbing some mineral oil and beeswax on it and giving it a little bit of a buff job. That was the bottom. The rest of the plane, the sides and the top, I've been, again, I put shellac on that. Um, two coats, let it dry in between, give it a light sanding, another coat, let it dry, give it another light sanding. Then what I do is apply paste wax and I apply paste wax with steel wool gives you one last little bit of a shine and a little bit of a leveling as you rub it on and uh, just coat that thing in wax let it sit a little while give it a buff job and uh, this thing is just 
absolutely smooth. I mean, I, uh, you'll see me tossing it here in a minute on a towel just to uh, kind of demonstrate how smooth it is. You've probably done the towel on the hood of your car test <laughs> when you wax your car. Uh, this acted the same way. It was just super slick and super smooth. The blade, again, was in remarkable shape. It was very 90 degrees. It didn't have any big pits in it. So I just used this diamond stone and gave it a quick polishing, took care of the burr. Now I'm going to remove the japanning. And I know there's lots of argument about should you take off the japanning and, and yeah, you know what, I bought this plane for dirt cheap. It's really more for fun than anything else that I was doing this. So I thought I'll strip it. So I'm using a, a chemical stripper here. I'm just slathering it on and then I'm uh, putting the parts in a, in a Ziploc bag and sealing them up. I left them for a couple days to let that chemical eat up the japanning. And honestly, it didn't work at all well. I ended up using lacquer thinner and coarse steel wool. And I would just uh, soak the steel wool in lacquer thinner and rub on the japanning. And that took most of it off, but it still wasn't perfect. Uh, and I wanted to get this really perfect because I wanted to try to get all the little lumps and bumps and imperfections out of the casting so that when I painted it, it had kind of a, a car-like finish to it. So after fussing around with this lacquer thinner for quite a while and then giving the parts a little bit of a scrub job, I ended up going to sandblasting and I used walnut shells. Uh, you can buy these aggregate uh, walnut shells. You can buy these at Home Depot. Uh, they're very uh, friendly to the environment. I made a homemade sandblaster and uh, you'll, you can find lots of YouTubes on this. I may do a YouTube on this. I can't believe how well this thing works. You put the grit in a, a bottle uh, you buy those parts at Home Depot. I shot the rest of the plane with that grit, and it just blasted the paint down to raw metal. No damage to the metal, but totally clean down to the metal. Now I'm applying a Bondo product. This is another fabulous product. You put it on with a credit card or something like that, and you basically just slather it on. It's super fine, and what it does is fill up all of the low spots in the lumps and bumps in a normal piece of cast iron. And so you leave that stuff on there, let it dry, and then sand it smooth. And you get a very glass smooth finish so that when you paint it, you get a nice gloss. I masked the parts I didn't want to get paint on uh, with masking tape. Uh, made a little homemade booth here, shot all the parts with a, a gray primer, shot them again with a black paint, gave them four or five or six uh, light coats of the, uh, two coats of the primer. There they are, just uh, primed and ready to roll. And then here they are uh, after being painted. So now I'm going to assemble the plane. Uh, I'll put this knob on loosely because the body of the plane, the steel part of the plane, is still a little bit uh, loose and you kind of get it into final position once you get your frog in place and you're happy with the frog being lined up with the 45 degree mouth uh, of the wooden part. You can see I used a straight edge there to adjust that frog to get a nice even flat plane for the blade to rest on. Put the lever cap on, tighten down that screw, and uh, there's a finished plane. You can see the polished screws and how good they look. And here I am planing with it. And honestly, it took a couple little tweaks uh, with the lateral adjuster. I slowly crept up on it with the regular adjustment, and the plane works like a like a, a gem. It, uh, it takes off really nice shavings. Uh, I don't know 
I just happen to like these planes. I like the way they feel in your hand. I've got plenty of uh, regular steel planes as well, but I have a, just a small collection of wooden planes that I'll show you here in a minute. I use one of them mostly as a scrub plane and the other two uh, just as smoothers. And uh, again, I just uh, took just a little bit of adjustment to get this to take off these just really nice feather thin shavings off of this piece of wood. You can see that there. There's something about the heft of these wooden planes and that, I don't know, they're comfortable in your hand. Uh, this little plane for not having a tote uh, is very comfortable to use because of the way they've rounded that cast iron part in the back. You can see it's pretty sharp looking with a few polished parts showing through. Again, I told you that I have a, uh, a little collection of wooden planes. I have a 36, a 35, and now a 22. Uh, the 36 was in such bad, I think I bought it for a buck at a garage sale. It was in such bad shape that I put a piece of Jatoba on the bottom of the plane and once I did that and waxed that up, it actually is one of my favorite scrub planes. So I've uh, sharpened kind of a radius in the blade and it works great as a scrub plane. So that was a 36, this is a 35. This is a little beat up again. I think I built the, t or I think I carved the tote for that one. And then here's my new 22. Just uh, a sweet little set of wooden planes. And that's the restoration. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe. And thank you for watching.